By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a classic matchup for you because I am playing against my brother. I'm playing against Jupe and he is bringing his Urnum on Ice deck to the channel again. We've seen this deck so often, but I love showing you matches with the deck because it's so versatile. And of course, when he's playing against me, there's only one deck I can get, which is Timmy's Spellbook. Now, it's the mono blue deck. It's got the four Tims. You probably know this already, but I mean... It hasn't been on the channel for a while, so I thought it might be fun to kind of show you the deck. And I have a brand new card in it that I would love to discuss during the uh, deck deck section of this video. Talking about that, I know that some people prefer to first go to the matches, then check out the deck deck. Now, the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the games and then you can kind of skip the deck deck. And maybe after the match, if you're curious, you can check out the deck deck afterwards. Uh, before we start with the deck deck, I would first give a shout out to The Vendetta. That's the game store that I am playing in today together with my brother. It's uh, my local game store and it's not in Amsterdam where I'm from. It's actually in Hilversum, the Netherlands. It's a great game store. Robert, the owner, shout out to you. He's a great guy. He's very hospitable. You can always play a game of magic there. He's, he's super friendly. And uh, I, he also allows me to record the matches there. So thank you so much for your hospitality. Um, yeah, and I think now that everything's out of the way, I'm going to start with the deck decks and I'm going to start with my deck, Timmy's Spellbook. Let's have a look. And here we see my deck, Timmy's Spellbook. So um, I'm always calling this deck mid-range control. And the reason for that is that, of course, it has a lot of control elements, the four counter spells and the mana drain. So basically five counter spells. I'm also playing with the Icy Manipulators, super control card. Um, but if you look at, at the rest of the deck, you know, and control magics, pretty control card. But if you look at the rest of the deck, there are also a lot of creatures in here, right? I'm playing with four particle sorcerers. I'm playing with two air elementals, two ghost ships, pirate ship, clone, ma motijin, mistress factories are kind of creatures too. So I'm playing with a lot of creatures as, as well. It's not just waiting for my opponent to do something and respond to my opponent. I want to do both things. I want to put some pressure on the board and at the same time have that control game going on. The thing with this deck though is that usually at the start of the game, it's really vulnerable because I'm nine out of 10 times, I'm going to just play an island and say go. So if my opponent is going really quick, it could be sometimes be, you know, difficult for me, especially when he ramps up with, for example, Moxon and plays out a big creature. That's kind of tough. If it's like smaller creatures, I can ping them away later in the game with, of course, the Tims. And also with my sideboard, I can, for example, board in the mazes of if to buy me some more time. So usually with, with really aggressive, low to the ground creatures, I can kind of like handle that. It's not easy. But but I can. But what's really tough for me, if, if, if my opponent goes really fast with like the, the Moxon and stuff, the acceleration, gets a really big creature out. That's also one of the reasons why I'm playing my City in a Bottle's main. Because a lot of creatures that I have trouble with, uh, early aggression creatures that I have trouble with, or the Arabian Nights creatures, right? You've got the, the Juzem Jinn, you've got the Urnum Jinn, you've got the Surrender Pafrit. Very good creatures, very aggressive, very cheap to cast, usually in decks that also play with power cards so they can get it out quite early. And that's really tough for me to deal with. So that's where those City in a Bottles come in really handy. So I'm playing two main. And then the funny thing with the City in a Bottle always is, what are you going to do after game one? If your opponent has seen it, what are you going to do with it? Uh, another thing about City in a Bottle is it's also a dead card a lot of times. You know, don't, I'm sure if you've played with it, you recognize that, right? It's really nice to play in main when it works, but in a lot of games, it's also a dead card. And I don't have, for example, a Sage of Latinum or an Atok to feed the artifact too. So in my deck, it's then really just a dead card. And that's kind of tough for me because the way I'm playing with this deck is I really want to try to get the most value out of the cards that I play out. Um, yeah, so yeah, this deck, I think what's really important... The last thing I'm going to say about it is that, you know, this is really typical one of those decks that the more you play it, the better you get at it. It's not a deck that you can just copy, play with it and expect to have great results. That's going to take time. This is one of those decks you got to put in the hours and then you slowly get better at it, which is, of course, in a lot of cases, uh, uh, so when you're playing with your pet deck, right? Your pet deck is usually something a little bit more creative and it's not something that... Um, 
you know, that's this this pre-built thing, you know. Uh, also, what's really important, like with so many other decks in old school, is how you sideboard, right? The sideboard is very decisive. As you can see, I'm playing, for example, with three energy fluxes in the side. Against certain decks, the energy fluxes are an absolutely killer, an absolute brutal. But of course, it does have an influence at what I'm going to board out. If I board in my energy fluxes, for example, there's a pretty big chance that I'm going to board out my IC manipulators, my copy artifacts, you know. Uh, and also, when you're looking... Uh, at the rest of the sideboard, for example, I'm playing with two Neveneros discs, which are great against these like like permanent heavy decks that want to create a really big board state, like playing with a lot of Jam Day Tomes, or maybe it's it's a combo deck with a lot of enchantments. Then it's really great to have the Neveneros disc because what I cannot counter is probably going to stick, right? So if I can counter it, I'm going to have a really tough time. That's where the discs come in. And maybe a little nice side note here as well is that I have two ghost ships in the side. So I can put in the two ghost ships and the two Neveneros disc and kind of play with the deck that I like to call Disco Boat, right? So I blow up the board, but my ghost ships survive. So that, when that happens, if that happens, it doesn't happen a lot, but it always puts a smile on my face. I always say, yeah, this is Disco Boat. And I, just, I, kinda, I, I like it. I'm laughing now just by saying it. Um, anyway, this is my deck. Now let's take a look at the deck of my opponent. And here we see the signature deck of Yup Urnum on Ice. So it's named after the Urnum Gins and the Ice Storms. Now what this deck wants to do, to do right is it wants to ramp in that turn one, right? It wants to play out a Lunar Elves or maybe a Mox or that single Birds of Paradise that's in here. And then turn two, ideally play out an Ice Storm. Ice Storm is Sorcery from green, one green and two. And it says destroy target land. So you can just take out a land, slow your opponent down while you're going faster with your ramp from the turn one play, right? And then hopefully in turn three, you can or play out a big creature like an Urn of Jin, perhaps even a Sarah Angel if you like find the right mana um, and, and the right accelerators, of course. But what you can also do is play out a Sylvan Library. And by using the Sylvan Library very aggressively, you get ahead on cards as well. So you're already ahead on, on mana because you just took out a land and you're ramping yourself, but now you're already ahead with cards as well. So that's a very strong component of this deck. And don't forget, it's not just green, white. There's also that blue power splash, right? We've got Time Walk, Ancestral Recall, and we also have the Brain Geyser. Now, Time Walk is also quite good in this deck because this is creature heavy. It, it wants to win mainly through combat damage, right? That's really the big idea of the deck. It wants to win with that Sarah Angel. It wants to win with the Urnum. So that makes Time Elemental quite good in this build. It also has some of the control elements, obviously, when you're playing with white. It's got the Disenchants and the Swords to kind of solve your problems. I always like the combination as well between Disenchant and, um, you know, the, the land removal. Because if you take away the lands, there's a big chance that your opponent will have some mana rocks and is still able to generate mana or to kind of ramp up despite the fact that you've taken out a land. Then if you have the Disenchant in place to take out that key soul ring or take out, you know, that Mox or, you know, play it on a Black Lotus, force your opponent to use it at instant speed when they really don't want to. You know, so Disenchant in combination with land removal, I've always felt that that is quite strong. Um, looking at uh, the sideboard of the deck, we see some uh, some Suchis, obviously, against the Abyss. And also, of course, some sideboard plan when the opponent, you know, drops maybe a city in a bottle. Perhaps you then want to take out your Urnums, take in the, put in the extra Sarah. We've got two Argovian Pixies as well. Some Mazes of If against very aggressive decks. So, you know, there are multiple strategies that this Urnum on Ice deck can take on. Overall, it's a very strong deck. There's a, a reason we see this deck in a lot of top eights. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's a great deck. And, and Yoop, of course, being the, the designer of the deck, knows exceptionally well how to play with this. Anyway, this is the deck of Yoop Urnum on Ice. We've looked at the other deck. That means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one. Here we go. Ooh, it looks like I'm taking a mulligan here. There we see the hand of my opponent here, Yoop. Ooh, this is looking really good. Look at that. Black Lotus, Mock Sapphire. But he doesn't have any lands. Do you see that? So really good hand. He doesn't have any lands. By the way, I am looking away. You know, I don't, I'm not there checking his hand out. Uh, but yeah, that was looking quite good. Now I'm drawing my seven. Let's take a look. What cards do I have here? Okay, so there's Air Elemental. I like the Soul Ring. Soul Ring is really important. Okay, putting the Jin on the bottom, understandable. That's a card you need later in the game. But I think that Soul Ring is really good. Turn one Soul Ring, if it can stick... You know, I can make it work. And remember, you know, my opponent here, Yoop, doesn't have any lands in his hand. So he is taking a big, big risk. 
There's a regrowth. Oh, that's so funny. Taking it back. So he's got one blue in the pool still. And playing a Sarah Angel turn one. That is funny. That is funny. Have you ever seen a turn one like this? I think he's he's just doing this because he want he want he wants to show off. He was like, I can do this in turn one. If I've got a control magic now, he's toast. But I, I think I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna play the ghost ship that was in my hand. But wow, what a turn one. That was spectacular. But I mean He's in trouble, though, because he's not finding any lands. Now, remember, he does have a Brain Geyser in hand, but he needs mana for that in order to uh, to make it count. And now I've got five, so I can play that Air Elemental I think I had in hand. Yeah, and now it's really tough, because next turn I can attack with the Air Elemental, and he will have to choose, am I going to trade? And, of course, you know, he went all in. Ooh, he is taking the trade. He went all in on the uh, Sarah Angel. If he can find a land and a balance, that will be really, really good for him. That is definitely a way for him to get back into the game. There's an attack. Now remember, I have the Jam Day Tome I can play out right now. Exactly, there's the Tome. A lot of glare, unfortunately. But we know it's a Jam Day Tome. So I'm going to untap here. Attack him for two. Going to drop to 16. There's the Tim. The Protocol Sorcerer. And yeah, it's a lot of problems here for, uh, for my brother. But he finds the Ancestral Recall. That is quite good. That can get him back into the game. There's a Tropical Island. I mean, he needs some more power cards, right? That is what, what's going to get him back into the game. And Argovian Pixies here. And there's the pass. There's the attack for two. It's going to drop to 14. Let's see. He does have those Ice Storms still, but he's under pressure at the moment. Okay, there's a Chaos Orb. That's pretty good. Counter spell though, on the Orb. There's the attack. I'm going to ping the Pixies here to death. And of course, end step, I'm going to draw a card. Yeah, it's still looking pretty bad. And the one thing that my opponent is missing here, well, he's missing quite a lot, but is, is a white source. He needs white mana uh, because, you know, white gives him access to the swords, to disenchant that whole control package, and of course, to the swords. And he's now on 12. I mean, it's going to be tough for him here. What can he do? Finding an Ice Storm, okay. And of course, I'm using the mana to still draw a card. Yeah, of course, Ice Storm not as good this late in the game. Pinging him for one, putting him on 11. Finding a new island. Attacking for two, putting him on nine. Can I find, for example, an Air Elemental to put some more pressure on? Ooh, am I going to play a Brain Geyser here? Going to tap. Three, it seems. I'm going to play a copy artifact. Going to tap the copy. Okay, I'm going to draw a card. Passing the turn. So I'm actually copying the soul ring. And I'm not copying the book. Ooh, look at that brain geyser here. Played by Yoop. So, you know, maybe it can get him back into the game. It looks like it's not, but... Pinging him for one, of course, he's on eight. Oh, I think we're going to see a huge Brain Geyser here. Yeah, Brain Geyser for six. So I'm keeping two blue open for obvious reasons. I don't want to get too greedy. And it's looking really good for me at the uh, opening game of our match. He's going to drop to six. I'm going to discard an island passing to turn. Let's see what he can do. Ooh, there is an Ice Storm. I'm saying, well, I guess it's an ooh moment because now I have to choose. I'm going to counter the Ice Storm. If I'm not, then he's going to go to combat, then take a turn. I mean, this is actually a pretty big deal here. I mean, that's why Ice Storm is so good. So even though I kept two blue open, it wasn't enough. There's the balance. That's what I mean. Oh, man, this balance. This is a killer. Is he actually going to come back into the game? That would be nuts. That would be absolutely nuts. If he's able to get back into this, I mean, wow. I would be so surprised. I have to choose what cards I can keep. So discarding two lands, that's not too bad. And now I can take my turn. Now I still have the Gem Day Tome. I still have a lot of mana because of, of course, the copied Soul Ring. 
Gonna play a Mishra's Factory. I mean, he's on 5. He's quite low. I'm still on 16, so... I think I'm still in a very good spot despite that uh, that balance. But that was, of course, a brutal moment uh, in the game and really a way for, for Yub to get back into this. And his mana base is now pretty decent. Oh, there's a disenchant. That is pretty good. Am I going to counter? It looks like I'm thinking about countering and changing my mind, though. Using the book one last time. There's an Argovian Pixies. This is tough, right? Do you want to counter a Pixies? Ooh, Ancestral Recall being played out here. So now we both played out our Ancestral Recalls in this match, and we both played out our Brain Geysers, so we drew tons of cards this turn, uh, this game. Tapping four, yeah, Control Magic. If I'm Control magic magicking this card, I think that I probably have maybe a Psionic Blast in hand. So I animate, attack, he's on three, and then Blast to finish the game, I think, but... We'll have to see. It looks like I'm a little bit in the tank still, counting my cards. Animating, attacking. Oh, look at that. So I guess I don't. There's a disenchant. Oh, wow. Disenchant on the control magic, and now I have to counter. This is really nice timing by Yoop. I mean, if it, if it would have worked, it would have been quite glorious. glorious. He could have blocked the, um, the factory with the pixies, killed it. You know, because, of course, the Pixies has that protection, kind of, from artifacts, right? All damage done by artifacts is reduced to zero. So that would have been kind of sweet. There's a Sarah Angel. I mean, he's not giving up, right? He's doing what he can to stay in this. Oh, there is a Psionic Blast. Yeah, there is that Psionic Blast. To win the game. Does he have a sword supply shares? He does. So it's not over yet. I mean, it's going to be over. He's going to gain four. He's going to lose four. So he's going to be on three. And then he can animate and attack, of course, with the factory and the Argovian Pixies winning the game. So I'm winning game one here. But um, I mean, I have to applaud my opponent for that epic turn one. I mean, that was, I've never seen that before. So thank you for doing that. It's great to have that uh, on the channel. And of course, this is just the first game. So we're going to shuffle up and we are going to catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. And here we see the hand of you. Oh, look at that. Cecil Rico turn one. That is a good hand. That is a good hand. Also, Sylvan Library. Oh, man, Th that is a really good hand. Let's take a look. What do I have? Uh, okay, I got Time Walk. I've got two islands. That's not too bad. Uh, it's okay. I mean, the Mamo Genesis is a bit of a fatty, so it's going to be tough. Oh, look at that start there. Yep, of course. Ancestral Recall, he's playing it during my upkeep, by the way, so he doesn't have to discard. I'm just playing a, an island and passing the turn. There we see the Argovian Pixies being played out by Yoop. There is another island. Tapping down the islands. And, okay, there is my time walk. Taking an extra turn. Untapping everything again. So this is kind of my moment of glory, right? It needs to happen now. Hopefully I can find another land. Okay, found an Ancestral Recall. That is pretty good, but I'm still looking for mana, though. So there's another island, so at least I'm not missing a land drop, and now I probably have to discard. Yeah, pointing out the fact that I re I'm really lucky with, uh, with those two power cards, but going to have to discard here. Okay, tapping two. What could I have for two? Okay, playing out the Chaos Orb. I just don't want to discard, I guess. So seven in hand, passing to turn. And I really needed that Ancestral Recall to kind of find an island. That's why I played it out in my own main. There's the attack on a drop to 18. Are we going to see a disenchant here on the Chaos Orb? Or, or is, or is you simply going to wait for me to activate it and then respond with a disenchant? He also has, we know that he's got a Suchi in hand, I believe, a disenchant. And that's about all. Like, oh yeah, balance as well. So pretty good hand. Finding a, a Mishra's Factory here. It's not going to do much against the Argovian Pixies. I could, of course, flip on the Pixies. That's an option. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here. Trying to decide what to do. 
I think if I'm going to flip, it's probably going to respond with a disenchant. Tapping four instead. Okay. Playing out the ghost ship. Okay. So I'm just, I'm not going for counter magic or flipping or anything. I'm just tapping out completely playing out the ghost ship. Of course, the ghost ship can block the pixies. So I'm kind of hoping here that he doesn't have a swords. Ooh, an Urnum. That is tough. That is, I mean, I can flip on the Urnum, I guess. He is tapping out for it. So he is giving me this option of trading my Chaos Orb for the Urnum Jin. Let's see what I'm going to do. This is an interesting moment in the game. I wonder what I have in hand. Now, remember, I am playing with two City in a Bottles main as well. So maybe I can find those against the Urnum. Tapping four. Are we going to see a Control Magic here? Oh, an Icy Manipulator. Interesting. So I've got this Icy. I'm just going to keep the Chaos Orb there on the board. Kind of as this token or something, this good luck charm. I don't know. Passing the turn here. Of course, I can now use the Icy to tap down the, uh, the Urnum. But I wonder if it, if it was the right decision because he was giving me this opening with the... Um, you know, with the Chaos Orb because he tapped out. Anyway, tapping down the Urnum. Let's see what he's going to do. There's not really an attack in it for him, it seems, at the moment. He could tap four, play the Suchi, for example. Okay, he's going to go for the Sylvan. Of course, he's still at the Sylvan. And there's the Disenchant. Yeah, finally the Disenchant. That actually I expected much sooner. And you know what? If I would have used the Chaos Syrup on the, the Urnum, the result would have been that he would have Disenchanted my Icy instead. So, you know, th those are the differences. And I, I really like the Icy. I like the versatility of, uh, of the Icy. So... I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you would have done. Would, would you have used the Chaos Orb on the Urnum and then, you know, just take the IC as a loss? Which is also... There, there, there are arguments to go for that line, you know? Okay, playing a Tim here. The 1-1 one, one Pinger, so I can start uh, shooting down the Argovian Pixies and they still have an island left. He's going to give a Forest Walk here to my uh, Protocol Sorcerer. He has to do that because of the Urnum, of course. During your upkeep, you have to give a creature of your opponent Forest Walk. So that's why that uh, little counter is on there. The bead, the glass bead. He's now looking at his cards for his Sylvan Library. He's still on 20, which is a problem for me, right? He can really use that Sylvan. He's got the life for it. I haven't really been able to put any pressure on him. It's actually the other way around. It's really you here kind of dictating the game, putting pressure on so far. There is a, a Mox Pearl and also a Pendlehaven hitting the board. So I'm going to tap down the Urnum again before combat. I wonder if he's going to attack with the Pixies because it's going to die next turn anyway because of the Tim. So maybe he just wants to attack and kind of bluff that he has something. Tapping two. Oh, there's another Disenchant. Yeah, now it's going to be kind of tough for me. There is even more pressure on the board in the form of the Suchi. Yeah, it's, it's looking bad for me, to be honest. This is really tough. I mean, at least I can ping down the Pixie. I guess, you know, and I can, I can block and regenerate one of the creatures. Oh, this is a great top deck. This is a great top deck. You know, the city in a bottle takes care of the Urnum and also blocks out all the other cards in his hand. The Arabian Night cards, of course. He can still play all the others. But um, yeah, the city in a bottle, huge problem here for my opponent. And remember, he's already played out two disenchants as well. And I think that's the strength of the City in a Bottle. It already cleared the card. It blocks cards from the Arabian Nights expansion. And, you know, do you really want to invest another disenchant? It's, it's card disadvantage. It's really tough to play against. 
But of course, you know, you doesn't really need the Urnims. The Urnims are super good in this deck, but he's got other ways that can lead him to the victory. He's taking an extra card here, by the way. So he's going to go to 12. Finding a Mox Ruby. Attacking here with the 4-4 and also with the 2-1. So, of course, I'm going to kill the Pixies here. Take 4 points of damage. Drop to 14. Tapping three, what are we going to see? Ooh, there's an Ice Storm. This is good, you know, these Ice Storms. They're good now because my deck is mana hungry. My deck wants a lot of mana. And now I've only got three islands and compare that to the mana base of my opponent. I mean, it's just pathetic what I have here. Three little islands compared to all the luxury on the other side. Look at that, just passing the turn. This is not good. I'm on 14. Of course, I am one game up, but it's, it's looking bad here for me. There's the attack. Blocking with the ghost ship and regenerating, so at least not taking any damage. Are we going to see? Yep, there's the Brain Geyser. I mean, when he taps out, I kind of know it's got to be the Brain Geyser. And I mean, again, great sequencing, right? First attacking with the Suchi, so making sure that I don't have any mana to counter. And then when I'm tapped out, playing that Brain Geyser. That's brilliant, and it's looking really good for him with all the card advantage. I'm on 14, he's on 11. Tapping 4. So tapping out, I'm tapping out a lot in this game. It's not really a counter game for me. Just continue to tap out, but I mean, let's see if it works out for me. There's an Icy Manipulator. Passing the turn. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Every time that Sylvan, although his, I mean, his life is dwindling, so I, I think he's not going to use the Sylvan that aggressively anymore. There's a Swords, so of course I'm going to ping him for one, then I'm going to take a life, going to go back up to 15. He's counting. Ooh, there's a Sarah Angel. Yeah, that's really good. Of course, I do have the Icy Manipulator still. I'm tapped out, by the way. Yes, I'm going to take the damage here. Dropping to 11. What I need really, what can help me out of this situation is a Control Magic. Finding a land. Okay, that's good. So maybe I can play Control and keep uh, mana open to use the Icy. It looks like that's what's going to happen. Yep, control magic. So, of course, I'm going to take over the Sarah. Sarah Angel is one of my favorite cards to steal because, I mean, she's never tapped. You know, I can always have a creature on my side to block instantly. And sometimes we're going to see if I'm going to do that now. Actually, I'm probably not going to do it because I can tap down the Suchi. But sometimes I choose to quite quickly trade when I have a Sarah in my possession because I know that my opponent, you know, playing white, having disenchants, I at least get some value out of the card instead of waiting for my opponent to find the disenchant and get the creature back. But, uh, you know, in this case, remember, he's already played out two disenchants. I also have, of course, the uh, Icy Manipulator to tap down the Suchi. But let's, let's first see if Yoop can find that third disenchant to take care of the control magic. It looks like he tapped the Ruby here. Not quite sure what he's going to do with it. Oh, he used it to play at the Soul Ring, I guess. So I'm tapping down here the Suchi before combat. If he's not playing anything out, anything else, then it's, it's starting to look bad for him, actually. Ooh, there's a balance, though. What am I going to do? Am I going to... You can see me think here. Because it's risky, you know. I, of course I want to keep the Angel. But if he has a disenchant, oh, I'm, you know, that would be a brilliant play if he has that disenchant. So this is really tough for me to have to make a decision here. And look at that. I'm going for the safe play. Going for the safe play. Really worried about the fact that maybe he's got the disenchant, you know, and I put away my ghost ship, then he disenchants my control magic, and he's got two four fours and I have nothing. I mean, it's... 
it, 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 these decisions are quite important, right? And, and you just don't know if he has it or if he doesn't have it. You know, he's played out two distant chance, yes, but he still has two more, right? So it's it's risky. Anyway, there are two more uh, Lanawar Elves finding their way to the board here. And uh, this balance, again, was a really good one. It kind of takes off the pressure. Oh, trying to play out a library. I can't because I have the city in a bottle. So taking it back. Tapping four, another ship, attacking here, putting him on six. I have mana open for Icy, so I can tap down the Suchi. And it's really, it's actually quite nice for me to, to look back at this game again and to kind of see how differently I'm playing with Timmy's Spellbook in this match. I'm not keeping any counter magic up the entire game. You know, I don't know if you've noticed that, but I'm playing quite aggressively. And he now has six life, and he really needs a flyer. Look at that, he's going to get aggressive. He wants to attack, so I have now a chance before combat to use the Icy. Tapping down the Suchi. Now, what am I going to do? So I can block the factory. He can pump the factory to a 3-3 so it stays alive. I can also choose to kill one of the, uh, one of the, the Lanowers. <clears throat> But then, of course, he can use that Pendlehaven. Oh, wow, this is really good. Finding the Sarah Angel. Oh, man. This game is a thriller. This is a true thriller of a game number two. It is so swingy. I'm on eight. He's on six. I mean, these are the games. This is why I love old school so much. These are the games I want to play. Very swingy, very close by. Uh, you know, we can both win it. Love these games. I mean, they could tap down the Angel, attack for four, put him on two, but then I'll die the next turn. So that's probably not a good idea. Checking out how many Swords to Plowshares he's played out so far. I think two, if I'm not mistaken. Not that many. Tapping five. So again, tapping out. Love it. Playing an Air Elemental. And passing the turn. So I'm just being very patient here. It's very tempting to play the air elemental, tap down the, the angel and attack with the ships, put him on two, but I have to, to be disciplined here. And I wonder if he attacks with the angel, if I'm going to take the trade. I could also double block on two ships, for example. There are a lot of possibilities. Let's just see what he's going to do. I'm probably actually going to tap down the the angel. That's another that's another thing I can do. So many options. So he's got he wants to go in combat. So I have to make a decision here to tap something down. Okay, tapping down the suchi. I really wonder if he's going to attack. I think I should have actually tapped down the angel. That would have been better. Now he's attacking with everything. So two Mishra's factories, two Lanawar Elves. And remember, he can pump a Lanawar Elf as well. And he's attacking with the Sarah Angel. So I really have to look at my life total. I'm on eight. So if I would only block the Sarah, um, I think I, I can survive. I'm actually on one if I do that. Because I take four damage from the factories. He's going to pump a Lanawar, so that's six. And then the other Lanawar, that's seven. So I would end up on one. So that's, that's something I can do. That's a line I can follow. Oh, look at that. I'm not going to do it, though. I'm going to block the Sarah and make the trade. Oh, I don't think that's a good decision because I'm giving my opponent time now. I'm playing very safe. I'm playing very slow and safe. I'm worried because I know that my opponent sometimes plays with psionic blasts as well. So I don't want to go under the, the four. That's probably why I've chose to, I chose to block the way I did. But it is, it is risky because if I, if I would have chosen to go to one, I could have won right now. So I'm giving him an extra turn. Do I want to attack here? Do I want to put him on a four and the next turn win? If I survive, of course. Going to put him on four. 
Tapping again, again, tapping out. I'm loving this. Oh, Mahamoti Jin, Papa Moti hitting the board. 5-6 flying powerhouse. That is really good. I mean, this is this is an exciting match, but I think it's over now, to be honest. I think this Mahamoti is the nail in the coffin here. There's the attack with both. I do love this. You know, I love it. Just attack. Why not? If you're going to die, go go out flaming, you know, go uh, with an alpha strike. Yeah, so I'm blocking them here. He's going to lose the creatures. Not even trying to keep them alive here. Could have kept one Lanawer alive. And that's it. He's saying, you got me. Also showing, of course, the Urnum that he couldn't play out. I had a Library of Alexander that I couldn't play out. But uh, wow. This was such an exciting game too. This was just marvelous. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Now the good news is, don't click away because we did play a third game. So you can see more of these beautiful decks if you want to. Stick around because we're going to shuffle up and we're going to go to game number three. Okay, game number three. Here we go. So it's our bonus game. And uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see if maybe you can still, you know, win one for the honor of the deck. And uh, I believe we are, we're both 2K uh, a mulligan, by the way. So we both got to put a card on the bottom. Which is tough, you know. It looks like I want to put the IC, but I'm choosing to go with the, I believe that was the air elemental, putting that on the bottom. And of course, Yoop gets to start after losing both of the previous games. Let's see what his deck can do. Ooh, there's a Black Lotus. There's a Mox. There's a Mox. There's a Mox. <laughs> oh, there's a Time Walk. Okay, sure. Go for it. Oh, and there's a Balance. No, 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 no. Oh, my God. This is sick. This is sick. I don't know what to say. I mean... This is ridiculous. I got no hand and he's going to take his extra turn. Finding another Mox. That's so funny. Like we're just in top decking mode. Oh, there's a Mox Sapphire. Okay, fair enough. But this is insane. This is really sick. Oh, nice. A strip mine. So even if I find an island, he's going to strip it. That's ridiculous. That is so ridiculous. I mean, who knows? Maybe I can find like Ancestral Recall from the top or something. Oh, yeah, of course. Yep. There's a really big creature. Now I need like a maze or maybe a land and a city in a bottle. Okay, there's a factory and he's gonna, yeah, strip the factory. That makes sense. Not really anything that I can do here, taking the damage, but what a sick opener here by my opponent. That was just uh, really, really cool to see. And I, I mean, he just loves explosive openings, you know. That's what he loves to do. He loves to go for it, you know, and give it a try. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm now slowly dying. So, uh, well, slowly, pretty quick, actually. I'm now on eight, so two more turns to go, and I'm toast. Five cards in hand. Cannot find any lands, it seems. Going to drop here to four. There's a regrowth. Oh, God. So he's going to regrowth, time walk, and then attack again. Oh, 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 oh. oh, look at my hand. Oh, man. Nothing I could do here. This game, man. I'm happy we played this third game. This was ridiculous. This was absolutely ridiculous. It was super short, but it's ridiculous. I'm happy to have it here on the channel. I mean, uh... This is so cool to, to have this uh, recorded. And uh, I'd like to thank you, of course, you. Uh, we played a lot of games that day, so maybe I'm going to post some, some more of our matches uh, on the channel. So uh, if you don't want to miss a thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And yeah, here you can see uh, see my deck, Timmy's Spellbook, here in the background. Uh, it's always a joy to play this deck. Uh, I love it, and it's, it's a joy to play against Ernum on Ice. Uh, both decks... They have so much going on. I thought game two was just really a thriller and kind of show how much fun, you know, old school magic is. You know, it is such a fun, fun format to play. Uh, if you enjoy, by the way, what I make, the content that I make, please take a moment to check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, because uh, on that page, you can find out how you can support me as a content creator. 
uh, and uh, and I'm really happy and fortunate they already have about 140 uh, patrons at the moment. But I would love, of course, to to get some more support. So please consider becoming a patron. It already starts with just one dollar a month, and for that dollar, there are some perks. You get your name mentioned uh, in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one, and you also get access to the Discord server, and you can join in on all the online Timmy Talks tournaments. Every you know two three months, I organize a tournament, and uh, yeah, you can you can join in, and of course you can become a part of the community if you become a patron. So if you have a moment, please check out Patreon.com/TimmyTalks. Maybe it's something for you. Thank you for uh, for taking the time to have a look. And now we are going to go to the end scroll. Let's have a look at our fantastic and amazing patrons and channel members. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Wow, you're still here? That's amazing. Um, do I have another game to play? Oh, wait a minute. Of course, in the introduction, I told you guys about a brand new card in Timmy's Spellbook, but actually I haven't shown it on a deck photo. I haven't talked about it since the introduction. So uh, fair enough, fair enough. I'm going to show you a game where I'm actually playing with the brand new card in Timmy's Spellbook. Ooh, exciting stuff. What do you think it is, actually? Think about it. What could it be? What is the deck still missing? Is that already a hint? I don't really... Maybe. Maybe it's a hint. Anyway, uh, we are going to go and have a look at the bonus game. And there you will see the card in action. Have fun. Okay, let's get this bonus game going. So uh, we have, I believe, Yoop still on the, on the play. I'm on the draw on this one. Now let's see uh, what our hands look like. There's a strip mine. Ice storm. And what else... There's a Black Lotus, three lands, and a Swords to Plowshare, so a very mana-heavy hand. But still, what's good about it is the Strip Mine and the Ice Storm. That could be quite problematic. Here's my hand, also very land-heavy. I have that Soul Ring, which is really good, in combination also with the Icy and the uh, Control Magic. So probably going to keep this one. I just have to hope, though, that I'm going to draw like some, some creatures off the top of my deck, perhaps, or a Counterspell. Finding another land, not ideal, since I'm already quite land heavy so soaring there on the board passing the turn here there's a tropical island Ooh, sylvan library so he found that from the top of the deck that is really good here for a uh, youp that's going to help him kind of find the the pieces he needs to perhaps put some early pressure on i do remember i have that control magic and of course the icy deciding not to play uh the icy manipulator out just keeping my mana open perhaps i've got a counter spell or pretend to have one in hand so making it a little bit more difficult for my opponent here to make a decision. He's going to take two cards, going to drop to 16. I wonder what he's going to do now. Remember, he also has a Black Lotus in hand. Going through the motion. What can he do? I'm still seeing a lot of lands there. City of Brass, I believe. Strip Mine. So what he could do is, of course, drop a land, play Ice Storm. Gonna play an ice storm. Sorry, gonna play a strip mine. I expected an ice storm. They're stripping. And a black lotus. Oh, I see the play now. He's got a creature there. Yeah, there's the Urnum Jin. Of course. So he wanted to strip so I couldn't counter. Then play the black lotus and go into Urnum. Tapping four here. There's probably gonna be the control magic. And then I just have to hope. Okay, no, there's the icy manipulator instead. Okay. I thought perhaps 
play the control magic and then see if you put play out his swords over his urnum. Or of course, you know, perhaps he's, he's going to find a disenchant. I'm going to go to 12 here. So if he has a disenchant, I think my, my, the way I'm thinking here is if he has a disenchant, he's going to disenchant the um, IC manipulator. So I'm kind of inviting him to use his disenchant on the IC so that my control magic has a bigger chance to stick. So there's an island here. A lot of glare on my side of the board, by the way. Oh, here we see the new card. So this is the new card. Oh, there's so much glare on it. This is so bad. Did you see it? Oh, yeah. Here we see, of course, you looking at it as well. So I finally got a Black Lotus, ladies and gentlemen. I finally did. You know, it took me. It was it was a long, long journey. Um, but the price has recently dropped a little and I, I just found a really good and reliable seller. I was able to make a deal. Uh, I'm, I'm super happy to have found the, uh, the Black Lotus. I also think that it's quite good in my deck because with one Black Lotus, I can always have or pretend to always have counter magic open. And of course it works great with cards like Brain Geyser, but also with my bigger creatures like Air Elemental, Mahamoti Jin. you know, just in some cases, maybe you want to get an Icy Manipulator out early. So yeah, I'm really happy with the Black Lotus and I've edited this card number 61 to the deck. So let's, let's see if it can have any value in this particular game. Okay, there we see the swords to plowshares here on the uh, on the urnum. No counter magic for me, by the way. So I am getting uh, four life. So this is kind of great, isn't it? Like, and he takes out his own creature, and I gain life from it. It's I mean, control magic can be such a uh, sick card if you time it right. Drawing a card here for turn. There's an island. Gonna tap five. What are we getting? Okay, there's a pirate ship. Now remember, pirate ship cannot attack unless my opponent has an island. And of course my opponent does. Unfortunately, there's a quick swords to plowshares here on my pirate ship. That is unfortunate. I am gaining four more life though. So I need to add those still, I believe. Or did I do that already? Okay, now it's there. So 24. And look at that. Yup is just taking so many extra cards here. Really wants to put pressure on. There's a sushi. Untapping everything. Still haven't used my Black Lotus, by the way. It's just there being pretty. And the Black Lotus, actually, you cannot really see it here on the, on the screen. The, the video recording quality is not too high, by the way. I'm sorry for that. But um, it's, it's a pretty beat up copy, actually. There's some inking going on on the card, but I don't mind because I'm going to play with it. So I was quite happy to find a, a copy that was kind of beat up from a reliable seller that was willing to make a deal. That was good. Anyway, uh, passing the turn here, it is looking quite, uh, quite good now for Yup. He's got the uh, Mishra's Factory and the Suchi. Of course, I can tap down probably the Suchi here. It's exactly what I'm going to do right now. And he's going to hit me for two. I've got enough life though. I've got some time. There's a City of Brass and ooh, time is slowly running out though. He is taking a damage, but another Suchi hitting the board. I mean, I have been thinking about perhaps trading in my energy fluxes in the sideboard for steel artifacts. There's a Papa Modi, Mahamoti Jin. This is actually a problem for Yup, of course, if he doesn't, you know, if he cannot find like a source, but he's already played out two swords to plowshares, I believe. So he has two more in the deck. But I mean, this is tough. It's difficult for him to get rid of a six toughness um, creature in the form of the Mahamoti. And look at that, he's just passing the turn, not even attacking. Oh, he does have the Swords to Plowshares. Oh, now I see what's happening. He's saying, oh, I'm going to go in into combat. Do you want to do something? And then I use the IC to tap down the Suchi. Then he plays the Sword. Swords number three. This is bad news for me. And I don't know if you've noticed, but again, no counter magic from my side of the board. Okay, tapping. Oh, I've got another control magic. That is good news. Stealing the Suchi, passing the turn. And Yup, of course, now just finding one card with the Silver being quite low on life. And he's inflicted, I think, all that damage to himself. I don't think I've dealt a single point of damage to him so far in the game. So he's just used the, um, the Sylvan super aggressively, attacking me again here. And I think 
The thing is with the with the swords to plowshares is of course he's giving me life. And that's kind of tough for him because he's taking his own life with the Sylvan. He's now on three. Oh, there's a time walk. Oh, look at that. Another sorts. So he sorts away the, uh, the Suchi. And now I'm taking on my extra turn. But I mean, oh, look at this. I can use the Icy on his City of Breast. He's going to drop to two. I'm going to untap. This is my extra turn after the time walk. Wow, I think it's going to be super difficult here for Yoop to win this. I mean, he needs to get rid of that Icy because with that Icy, I can tap down the city. If I do that twice, it's the end of the road for him. Tapping two here. Okay, oh, there's a copy artifact. Actually copying the Icy Manipulator. Could have copied the Suchi as well, for example. But of course, I want to make sure that I can keep one Icy. That's kind of my win con now. So I'm going to tap down the City of Brass and the Suchi before combat. Then he's going to attack. But I mean, I've got so much life because he's played out all his Swords to Plowshares so far. And that's it. Yep, I'm showing uh, the card that I would draw. And that's it because next turn, of course, I could tap down his uh, City of Brass in the upkeep so he couldn't even draw a new card. He couldn't even see the new card. Uh, so it's the end of the line here for you, but what an uh, exciting game. And I hope you liked uh, seeing my new card. It actually didn't, didn't do much uh, in this match. So that was kind of funny, but it was there. It was on the battlefield, you know. I mean, I like it. I, I can now play a, a Timmy turn one. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks and see you next time. <laughs>